Good day everybody, um, I don't know if you can hear because I set my microphone to quite low but there are three little children here, they're my nephews and they are just screaming all day and I love it, I can't ask for anything better. You hear that man? Well, it's not like I can find a time where they aren't screaming so I guess I have to just record over them, come on. In my last video, some of you guys mentioned that I should voice over my process and explain what I'm doing, so that's what I'm doing. Fucking kids, holy shit. Anyways, this is a reimagination of MySpace uh, from my series Social Media High, where I reimagine social media as high school related characters. They could be teachers, they could be students, they could be anything. In this case, MySpace is or was a student. As you all know, nobody uses MySpace anymore, and uh, he's dead. He's dead in my in my version. This is a funeral picture of him, and of course he is emo, because what else would he be? Anyways, back to the drawing. Um, back to the process. I mean, so I'm lining right now, and uh, I find line art quite valuable in my art practice. Uh, it's something that I'm the most proud of, is that the best way to put it? It's something that defines my style, the line quality. I don't know if you guys noticed, but I almost never- fucking kids- I almost never go back to the line once I already put it down to adjust it. And the reason for that is to preserve the energy of the line. I know it sounds a little strange energy of the line, but hear me out. If you readjust your lines by thinning or thickening them after the line has been already put down, you lose the natural, for the lack of better words, rhythm. You lose the natural rhythm of it. A line needs to happen in the moment of making the line, not afterwards. If you want a certain part to be thicker, you put more pressure or slow down when you're making the line. If you want certain parts to be thinner, you either apply less pressure or speed up when you're making the line. If you go back to the line afterwards and try to fix the lines, the line will not look natural and it will lose its rhythm or flow. By the way, if you want to use the brush that I'm using, it's my custom brush and it's available only on my Patreon for even the lowest tier, which is only a dollar a month, or my cute brush, both links in the description. Right now, I'm just filling in all the areas where the color is supposed to go down um, with dark shades of gray. You guys ask me why I do this and there are two reasons why. The first reason has to do with value. It is to not miss any spots that should be filled in. Uh, since the display on my uh, display on my tablet is quite bright, it's, uh, it's easy to miss a spot if the color that I'm putting down is on the higher value. Uh, which is just a fancy word to say uh, light color, lighter color, like this character's vampire pale skin tone for example. The second reason has to uh, the second reason has to do with hue. You could just say Sylvie, you can just use any dark color instead of gray. But I like using gray because gray is a shade. Shade does not have hue. Your eyes can adjust to dim down certain hues. For example, if you look at a red square for 30 seconds and look at a white wall or something, you will see a green square instead of red. This is because the cells in your retina responding to red is firing less because they are, you know, tired. For this reason, if I use placeholder colors instead of gray, you won't be able to put down accurate colors when you're replacing these with final colors. I talked too much and the video is already halfway through the coloring process. As you see, I've replaced all the grays with appropriate colors. But I'm not filling it with one tone, I'm using at least two tones for the same surface area. Generally warmer tone on top to indicate light and cooler tones on the bottom. And now I'm just adding in final details, highlight for the nose, highlight for the eyes, highlight for these spiky things, whatever they're called. And here I'm putting down blotches of his actual skin tone to indicate that he put a lot of freaking foundation on his face and I'm blending it out. I don't want to overblend because I want to preserve some of the harder edges. Here I'm filling in the cast shadow casted by the plant and again I'm blending the tips out with my custom brush that's only available on my Patreon and cube brush. I've used the lasso tool and the airbrush to highlight the glass of the frame and we are done. What do you guys think? Uh, if you guys like the video, subscribe, blah 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 blah. See you in the next one.